It's so easy to see in hindsight, like, oh, that was always my passion. I was always really interested in it. Uh, and it is true. I was always interested in um, dressing up and play acting and part like kind of storytelling with putting on costumes, sketching things, sewing, like kind of all of the aspects of the job that I do now. But I didn't know that costume design was a job. So I knew that I had all of these hobbies uh, and then it took me a while to figure out like, oh, how lucky for me that all of these things that I love to do in my spare time actually all come together in one job that you can get paid for. <laughs> Three quarters full and people are still coming in. Yes, I can hear them. I can hear their hushed whispers, hoping and praying for a disaster that will prevent my nuptials from being finalized. Are you listening to yourself? Because maybe it's you who's actually not too sure about this wedding. And maybe you're the one trying to sabotage it by accusing everyone else of being against it. Didn't you blame me for being a little afraid? It's a big step for me. Hey, it's going to be OK. You're going to be OK. I'm going to be right here by your side. So if you're scared, I'll be right there. I never said I was scared. I said I was afraid. This is the difference. OK. Hmm. Well, if you get afraid, I'll be there. Yes. Thank you, Guillermo. You're my best... man. A wedding is usually kind of an easy thing, like, you know, it's a wedding. There are going to be a lot of costumes. The wedding dress, the wedding party, the wedding guest. So that on its own, you know, we did a really special thing for Nandor's wedding look was a bit of a departure for him. You know, every season vampires have to do formal wear. So I feel like every year we're kind of upping the ante with them. But this year with it being his wedding and he's a total groomzilla. So he really had to be extra special. So we used, you know, shapes that we hadn't used before. And we just built from scratch, like everything that he was wearing was new and designed for him. But then also in the episode, there was the makeover montage at the beginning uh, where Nadia and the guide take the Baron, who's embarrassed about the fact that he's a charred torso, <laughs> uh, with one arm fused to his body. Um, they take him for a makeover at a tailor shop and they dress him up in all kinds of like, it was really just a buffet of wacky costumes. Like, um, you know, I think some of them even got caught. Like, a businessman with a trench coat, little sailor boy, where we had to scale down the little sailor costume so that the feet were at his waist. Um, the candy stripes on the bicycle matching with Nadia, and then the other characters got into it as well. So we were building for Nadia and for the guide, and it was this, I think, I can't remember how many um, little vignettes it was, but it was the fact that it was a montage um, with, you know, really funny costumes, I think, and costumes on really interesting bodies. <laughs> It was a bit of time management, really. So for some people we knew, we knew for the montage that we would have to build most of the costumes just because of the bodies. Uh, you know, I can't go to Banana Republic and just buy something that's going to fit a charred legless torso with one arm fused to his body. Like, that's just not in their size run. Um, and so... <laughs> I knew I had to uh, put a lot of our time and resources into Nandor because he is the focus, it's his wedding, um, also his bride. I was able to do a bit of a workaround with her. I was like, okay, 10 days, we can't make, we don't have time or money to make a wedding dress. So we got um, just a wedding dress from David's Bridal. I was like, it's gonna have the basic shape, it's gonna have the fabric. And then we just added as much as we could. It's like we bought a sheet cake and then we piled tons of icing onto it. So we put tons of lace and trim and added a little jacket and it went from being a white dress to being this like silver metallic gold kind of Persian princess moment. Um, so the focus was the two of them. Uh, Marwa, the wife's parents were also, you know, we wanted to put some thought into them. The other vampires in attendance for the cast, um, because I really needed to save time, I tried to pull from their existing closet. So Laszlo was able to wear his performance look that he had used to accompany baby Colin on the piano. For Nadia, I think I reused one of, I reused a gown that she'd 
worn for a formal portrait, but added um, a fancy shoulder piece to it. So just trying to rework what we had. And then the other build that we had to do, the sire was scripted as wearing a tuxedo. And the sire is that big quadrupedal winged <laughs> creature. So building a tuxedo for someone who walks on all fours, has an enormous tail and wings, that was that was kind of a marvel of cutting actually to make the gen it, I think it fit really well um so it was and then for the background it was uh pulling from rentals and just kind of making them look everyone look really styled and fabulous because it was the event of the season I think the biggest challenges were creatively, I think, coming up with um, new ideas for especially and then just having the time to produce them. Because of the format of Shadows, the way it was structured from the beginning, it's a documentary style format and they have what's called the talking heads, which is the interview where they're like direct to camera. And the way it was set up initially, it's unlike, for example, a drag race type of show where every time the performer is talking to camera, they're always in the same thing. For us, it's more of like, you know, they grab them at, you know, moments when they were available. So throughout any given episode, each lead might have between four and eight costume changes. And so when I can pull from closets, that's a lot easier. I can just kind of mix and match. But for Nadia and the guide in particular, because they were at the nightclub, it was we kind of had to create a whole new wardrobe for both of them. So the challenge was just like, you know, not wanting to reuse too many pieces, but you know, how do we come up with more and more things? <laughs> so it's a lot of juggling of time and schedules. What I love about costume design is I think it's the marriage of a few different things. I mean, I love, I do love clothes very much. <laughs> um, I, I love textiles. I love making things. Um, and then I think ultimately it's about storytelling and being able to kind of contribute to telling a story and creating a character and it's also a lot of it's make-believe and it's also nostalgia usually when I'm thinking of a character or a piece of clothing or a costume it comes from somewhere like someone that I know or someone in my past or even a historical figure and so I like being able to kind of use something that feels really familiar and bring it to life again and have that connect with people I love when people it just happened to me on a show this summer where the showrunner was like, oh, I'm almost feeling a bit uncomfortable because this really feels like 1999 in the Midwest. He's like, this is so like I'm back there. I'm transported back there. And I thought, perfect. Like, that's exactly what I want to do is to make people like remember things and feel things.